from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. But you, men of God, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you are called when you made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you before God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who gave testimony under Pontius Pilate for the noble confession to keep the commandment without stain or reproach unto the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the blessed and only ruler will make manifest at the proper time the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, and whom no human being has seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal power. Amen. The word of the Lord. I don't know about you, but when I go to a Mexican restaurant and they pull out those uh, delicious multicolored chips and green salsa before me, I instantly begin eating them and in conversing with my friends who, whom I'm invited. And then somewhere in the conversation, time has passed. Uh, there's an, a waiter who interrupts and says, here's your meal. I don't know how many of you have experienced um, ordering things and being presented with a thing later and having eaten about two baskets later, you're too full to eat the main course. And so you're either confronted with two options, either eat half of what you've ordered or the classic take it home because you'll eat it later. I'm guilty of this myself. What I highlight here is the virtue of temperance. In this instance, the lack thereof with the goods before me, the chips. Of course, there's nothing wrong with the chips themselves and the salsa, but in this case, I have filled myself up before enjoying the delicious enchiladas and rice and beans that were supposed to be before me. I inordinately let my appetites take a hold of me. I have let pleasure dictate my will to an action that I could have otherwise redirected. A similar incident happens in today's readings where we hear about Amos, the prophet, and in the gospel with the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. The church, in her wisdom, has placed these readings accordingly to allow us to see the gradual progression of a nation to an individual. What is common among these readings? The sin of complacency. The sin of complacency creates idols of God and disfigures our brothers and sisters. In Amos, God condemns the complacency of the Israelites and scolds them for it. And effects of that scolding is the reparation of the many sins that Israel has committed. In the Gospel, Jesus offers us a precise and concrete judgment of the effects of this complacency. And in this case, he highlights that the rich man will eventually end up in torment. And the Lazarus, in particular, will be in the bosom of Abraham. So here we are given the progression of sin from nation to individual to see how God operates in the world. One thing is true that we must keep in mind is that it has nothing to do with the wealth that one possesses. Rather, it has everything to do with the attitude of the wealth and the action one does with the wealth. And so that leads us precisely to what our reading is today. What shall we do in the face of complacency? St. Paul writes to Timothy after informing him about the church in Ephesus, how the religious leaders have lived in complacency with respect to the doctrines that they've been teaching and with respect to the wealth that they've been extorting those around them. And so St. Paul highlights four particular actions in response to these complacencies. He states, you, men of God, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Pursue the virtues. 
which will allow you to properly be disposed then to act. Act where? To compete well for the faith. With respect to competition, um, some of us are quite um, competitive here at this house when it comes to board games. And so in particular, some Catan games can be played around and you eventually have some people trading certain items with one another and you realize that you have to win. So this method of winning, St. Paul is asking Timothy with respect to competing with faiths that the church has given them with respect to other ideologies in, in the time. He continues with, lay hold of eternal life to which you were called, and then concludes, keep the commandments. Now the question is, what do these four actions have in common? And the answer is humility. We pursue, compete, lay hold, and keep God's law and love when we recognize that we are broken individuals in need of grace. We are then told by St. Paul, do these things in light of these other actions around you because you are in need of God's grace. The common doctor of the church defines humility as the means of seeing ourselves as God sees us. Knowing every good we have comes from him as pure gift. Interestingly enough, Aquinas places humility under the virtue of temperance. Humility has to do with the attitude of what is given to us with respect to temporal goods. And that temporal good can also be with respect to one's own ego. With humility, we see created goods as God's gift to be shared. This sharing is a reminder that we are blessed by God and are likewise called to live in solidarity with one another. So how do we curb our complacency? By pursuing the virtues. By remaining strong in faith. Remaining obedient to our confession. Remaining faithful to God's law. How are we espousing that in community? How are we espousing that when we go out to ministry? Are we complacent with our prayer life? Are we putting it off because this is just the way I do my routine every evening, that I have to do these things? How are we complacent with our friendships, with our family members? I hope that the end, when the time comes, the Lord will tell me, hopefully, and all of us here, uh, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Here, oh, my